guys a quick note before we start today's video. I am going to be in Florida the first weekend of February. February 1st, I will be giving a free lecture at the Gold Coast Aquarium Society in Fort Lauderdale. And on February 2nd, I will be at Neighborhood Fish Farm in order to do a meet and greet. I hope to see a lot of you there. It'll be a really good time and more information will be in the pinned comment as well as on my website. Now let's talk about some shy fish. Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today we're going to talk a little bit about what makes fish shy and if they're worth it. There are lots of things that can make a fish hide. It can be the improper tank setup, meaning not the right decor for the fish or not the right fish for the decor. A natural inclination to hide because of their small stature or even the fish that they're found alongside in the wild or an improper combination of fish, not enough of each type, or again, poor compatibility. It's important when you're setting up an aquarium for small fish to really take into consideration what your goals are. Do you want to breed these fish? Do you want an active, visible, uh, colorful community? Do you want them to exhibit their more natural behaviors? And if you can find the answers to those questions, you'll have a lot more success. For instance, this tank is hideously ugly, but the goal for this particular aquarium is to allow these fish to show their natural behaviors. Now, these are a wild betta species that um, do fine in groups. You can keep them in pairs or harems. And I've chosen to keep them in a very large harem in this example. I have a lot of females to not quite as many males. And what that allows is for the females to sort of be inquisitive and come out. The females are the more drably colored ones here. And I find that they tend to come to the front of the glass and really make the boys feel comfortable. Now, this is a short end out 15 gallon aquarium and the back two thirds is full of of plants from top to bottom and the entire surface of the aquarium is also covered with floaters. And this really allows these fish to do what they do, which is be sort of reclusive. Now I have left the front portion open so that during feeding time I can get a really good look at them. They are a beautiful species and I'd like to hear from you guys if you'd like to see me set up a pair for breeding or if you'd like to see more of a community display. So let me know down in the comments. Now they are, as mentioned, quite beautiful. Uh, in order to film these guys, I have to sit in the dark on the floor underneath my sink and not move at all. And once they feel comfortable, the girls all start coming out, then the boys start coming out and I can really enjoy this beautiful species. Now my goals for this aquarium are just to let the fish do what they do and they're already bubble nesting. This lets me know that while this aquarium is unattractive, the fish are certainly pleased with it. Um, again, I would like to do more with these guys. And a lot of these fish will end up being for sale. But for now, I'm just enjoying learning about them. As I do get more experience with this species, I'll be sure to do a species spotlight. So make sure you subscribe with that notification bell on so you don't miss updates about these guys as well as many of the other fish in the fish room. Now I'm really enjoying these. They're quite fascinating in that this is a hard water species. Now they are often collected from brackish waters, um, but these particular fish were kept in full fresh water and have been breeding and thriving in such. So I'm going to keep them that way as well. Though who knows, maybe it's a good excuse to branch out into brackish aquariums. Let me know your thoughts on that as well down in the comments. Now, as mentioned, these are a fish that like to hide. So it was important to provide them with adequate spaces to do so, so that they have the feeling of security and we do get to see them most specifically during feeding time. But even if you just sit quietly in front of this aquarium, they do come out in great numbers. 
Um, you can see how dim and dark the aquarium is to suit their needs. Again, I had to take my goals for this particular group of fish into consideration. Um, otherwise, it just would not be a successful aquarium. And there's a lot of room for improvement, so stay tuned for that. Now, another species in the fish room that I almost never see are these black darter tetras or Plysilocerex weitzmanii. I've been maintaining these for years now, and often the tank just looks completely empty. Empty. I have it set up extremely densely planted with tons of hiding places. And if you've been around for a while, you'll know that for a while I had wild endlers in with these guys as well. Uh, but they were eating all the babies and it really just wasn't making them come out more as I had hoped. So I ended up moving those endlers back into their own aquarium to continue that breeding project. Now, these guys are absolutely stunning fish, as you can see, but they wouldn't be a good choice for someone who wants to see a lot of their fish, as they do just hide. Again, the goals for this aquarium were to breed these fish and maintain these fish, and it has been quite successful in that regard. As we look around the aquarium, you may see little tiny faces popping out of the carpet of crypts in here, as there are quite a few babies. It's been a really fun and exciting uh, project to get this fish consistently breeding, um, though it is one at some point I move away from just because it's a 20 gallon tank that almost always looks empty. And I really feel like I've done a great service to this, this fish and it may be time to move to a new project. Next door to them are is my other wild betta tank. You guys know the algae scape. It's one of my favorite aquariums in the entire fish room. And the goals for this aquarium were a bit different. Now, I'm not particularly concerned about breeding the wild bettas in here. They were just a species I wanted to keep. So I set this tank up with that bottom two thirds with lots and lots and lots of botanicals and hiding places. Though I did end up putting a wabikusa ball with um, some plants and some pogostemon octopus in case they do want to bubble nest. But the goal for this aquarium was just to have an active little Asian aquarium. So I have it stocked with Danio tinwini or the gold ring Danios, my chili rasboras, and then of course my wild bettas. Now, if the goal were to be to breed these bettas, it would probably be best to put them into their own aquarium and probably one that's quite a bit smaller than this one. But I wanted an active, colorful aquarium to go alongside them. And I was really hoping that these fish, these, uh, these tiny fish would make them more comfortable. It hasn't really seemed to work that way, but it is a successful aquarium. A lot of times folks will put in fish that are notoriously outgoing with fish that are shyer in order to make those, those shy fish feel more comfortable. Sort of the same concept as dither fish or target fish for cichlids. Um, but again, in this case, it, it really hasn't worked. Um, the bettas basically hide all of the time. And in order to capture them on film for you guys, again, I have to stand in a dark room at the top of a ladder and wait for about half an hour after adding food in order to see them. Now, I have left this front portion of the tank open for feeding so that I do get the rare glimpse of them because when I do see them, it is always so rewarding. They're absolutely gorgeous. And this this is my male here. It's a stunning little fish. Um, at some point, maybe I'll pull them to try and breed them, but I think I'm going to work with the other wild betta species first simply because they're more unusual than these. And I think that they'll be a better project for a lot of you guys. These are a very soft water species here. Again, my goals for this aquarium have been met, so I feel like it's really successful. Um, partially because the natural inclination of the chilies and the danios is that they seem to be completely unaware that they are a very small fish and low man on the totem pole as far as the food chain goes. And therefore, they are always active and visible and really, really just striking against this very, very green aquarium. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with stocking fish from mixed regions, for instance, South American with Asian. I do find in my experience that you get a more successful and outgoing aquarium when you group fish based by at least loose ge geographic region and really pay close attention to the numbers of fish that you can get. With small fish in particular, the more you have, the better they do. This is especially true of some of the smaller danios. 
Um, but also with things like Boraris and Rasboras, etc. It's also important to remember that just because a fish is small, it doesn't mean that it does best in a small aquarium. In fact, in my experience, little fish do better in mid-size aquariums at the least, things like this 20 long, because you can have so many more of each species that you choose to stock. And this also allows you to layer your stocking like I did in my 75 gallon South American. Now a 75 gallon is a relative palace for small fish, but it really allowed me to have large groups of each of the species I wanted to put in here so that they could really exhibit more natural behaviors. The green neons hang out in the middle and they're known as a pretty shy fish generally, but with the layer of pencil fish above them, it really makes them feel comfortable and secure and they are always extremely visible. So by using a larger aquarium, I was able to achieve uh, more species with more natural behavior and really just what I think is a super successful aquarium full of fish that in small numbers or small aquariums tend to hide. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed talking about shy fish. And I have to tell you, in my mind, they are 100% worth it and so rewarding and amazing when you get those small glimpses of them. As always, thank you for your continued support.